Hey guys, it's May May, and you have asked me to create for you an easy gift card pull card. Okay, so check this out. If you pull right here, you have this super cute little gift card that's held in place. It's not going anywhere, and I'm going to show you how to do this super quick and easy. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you something real quick. As you know, the holiday is this weekend. It's the 4th of July, and I'm going to take a couple days off of filming. I have not done this in a long time, so I'm going to take Thursday, Saturday, and Tuesday off off as vacation. Those are my normal videos I would normally film. That doesn't mean you won't see me though. I'll still be around. We have a sale coming up for the end of the week. Um, so we'll do a quick live. We may do a crafter after show Thursday. I'm just going to take some crafting and filming off for the holiday and also because I am working to get Made at Con done. And this is kind of a situation we weren't expecting. So we kind of got to put a little extra time into it right here. And I know you guys will understand. And I thank you so much for giving me a little bit of time off this weekend. So without further ado, let's make this cute card. So here's what I've done so far. I've cut a piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter by about three, three and a half. Just to, this really doesn't matter as much as long as it's four and a quarter wide. And then I have some extra here with some circle punches. So I'm going to punch one big circle. So one two inch circle. And then I'm going to punch a couple of these guys. This is a three quarter inch. I don't know exactly how many I'm going to need yet. So I'm just going to punch several because it can't hurt to have too many. And then let's punch some of these. This is a half inch. It's a little bitty guy. They like to roll around. And then I'm going to punch a one and three fourths. And I'm again, I'm not exactly sure how many I'm going to need. But here's the thing. We're going to just make this stencil for ourselves, right? So I'm going to put this one here, kind of the big one. And then I'm going to put this one kind of overlapping it a little bit like so. And I'm just going to lay these around and try to get the feel of a cloud. You know how you've seen those stencils that have that little cloud line? Well, I don't have one right now, and I want to just kind of get the feel of a cloud. So let's see if we can move that one up a little bit. That may be too much. Something like that. And then I think I'm going to put this one up there. So that will be the shape of my cloud, and I'll just glue these down. Okay, so I'm going to take my glue. I think I'm going to get my quick stick to help me out too. And I'm just going to like pick this guy up and glue him in place right here. Dot of glue, put him back down. Then I'll pick that whole section up, this dude up, put a dot of glue. So I'm just gonna work my way around gluing this guy down. I don't know this for certain, but I feel like some of the trick with the cloud is to not have um, perfect circles. So that's why I have them kind of laying like that, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue all of this to here. So just run some glue down. Lift this up and just glue that to my sheet. So now you see that shape? I think this will work. Let's see. <laughs> this is me just wanting to make clouds on my card but not having exactly what I needed. So we're going to make do, right? Let's see what happens. Okay. So this is my little homemade stencil. This is my card front. It's just four by five and a quarter. And then I'm going to take this little guy with my... Um, blending brush from Pink and Main and some tumble glass distress oxide and let's just see what happens. I don't know. I feel like it'll work but we'll find out. So I'm just going to blend this on top of our little cloud stencil like so. Let's lift that up and see what we get. That feels kind of cloudy doesn't it? Now I'm going to flip it over and come up here to the top and see what I get if I kind of come this way at it. There's that, and now I'm just going to kind of offset it and move down a little bit. Something like this. I did not clean my brush from last time to this time. Can you see all that green in there? I don't think it's going to matter too awful much. So, lighter hand this time. And I just want to get that edge. Isn't that looking cute? I think this might be working. All right, let's come over here. Let's do the same thing. Again, a lighter hand. And just focusing kind of close to the stencil. You know, the cloud would, the sky would be kind of variegated, right? It wouldn't have the very same colors all throughout. So then let's see if we can do this little guy, like so. I'm just going to keep work, working it down and see what we get. 
Okay, so you can see I did a little practice. I wanted to see how this would work because I don't want to teach you wrong. It is working, but here's the trick. I'm going to start kind of low on my card, um, kind of where I want the horizon line to be because I'm going to work my way up, okay? So I'm going to come right here and I'm just going to hit the edge of that cloud just like that, okay? And that leaves that little bit of white there. And now I'm just going to overlap it over here and I'm going to do the same thing Maybe even flip it around. So I'm going to flip it around like this and then hit the edge of that cloud. Good deal. And then I think I'll go above it in this area and hit that little cloud edge. Like so. And then keep going right up here in this corner and lay some in. Now what I'm going to do is just come down here to the bottom and just bring some blue up just like so just to kind of blend that sky in just anywhere I feel like it's too white and there you go now look it's not perfect but it looks like a sky to me and I didn't have that stencil to do that with and I think that worked just fine right I think I'm gonna come in here and see if I can lay in a little bit more right here I don't want them to match see how that's like that so I'm going to flip this over and I think I'm going to turn it on its side a little bit and just see if I can get a little bit of a color of a line right there. Look, isn't that cool? I like it. I think it works pretty good. It's a way to get around if you don't have what you need. And honestly, the more I practice and play with that, I bet the better I would get at it. Okay, now to make the road area. So for the road section, let me show you what stamp I'm using. This set is called Relic. I love this set. And this piece right here is what I'm going to use for the road. When I did this set, so many of you said it looked like a piece of bacon. It does kind of, doesn't it? But we're going to use it for a road today. So I'm going to take this little guy and I'm going to ink him up in some pine cone ink. I want the road to be kind of brown. And I really don't mind if it's a little distressed, so I'm not going super heavy there. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to ink it in this way. See how this kind of has this curve? I don't really want to fight that curve. I want to just ink this up kind of low on my page, like so. And then I'm going to try to come back and see if I can kind of match it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just see what happens if we come in from this angle and see if we can lay it in kind of cool there. There we go. Not bad, right? That could be water, by the way. That could totally be water. My plan is to put this little truck on there like a road. I think once I put the truck there, it'll make it look like a road, but it could totally be water. I also want to do kind of a field of flowers behind it. I know it's masculine, but I think we can put some, some flowers back here and it'll be okay, or even some grass. So this stamp set, I'm using this little guy right here. This one's called Patina, and I just want that little dude to be grass. And you guys said you wanted to see me use more of my stamp set, so we're mixing it up today for sure. And I'm going to use this color called Green Oasis. And I'm going to apply some grass just down here to the bottom a little bit on top of the road. Just kind of like this, just wherever, up and down a little bit. I love this stamp set. I think it works really good for this kind of look. Isn't that cute? That looks like grass to me. Let me show you something you can do. Whenever you're trying to build a scene like this, you can always bring the piece over that you're going to put on. See how cute that is right there? I love that. I think that little truck's going to be adorable. I'm going to stamp him on paper and color him and put him back there. But I'm wondering if I could add some color there for to look like maybe dandelions. Let's see what we can do. So going back to the relic set, I pulled out the little dots. They're just little tiny dots on the um, piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp it but I'm going to ink it about halfway. Can you see what I did there? Let me get it. See how I only have ink at the very top? And then I'm going to bring it over here to these guys. And I'm just going to touch the top area there. You can hardly see that. Let's see if I can do a little more so you can see it. I'll bring it up to the camera too. Just to bring a little color and to look like these are like a field of dandelions or some kind of little, even a weed that has a little yellow flowers on it, but I'm just not, I'm not inking up the whole stamp, just the top portion. So I don't even have to mask it off. I just lay it on there and stamp. Let me bring that up so you can see it. Look how adorable that is. It just looks like a little field of little dandelions. Now let's get our truck ready. So I'm going back to that scrap paper I made all the holes out of, and I'm going to ink this guy up 
stamp him down here. I'm going to be cutting him out, so I just need a little bit of room to get this done. I might better go this way. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to stamp him here, and I'm going to dig into another stamp set. Y'all said you wanted to see stamp sets. I'm going crazy today, right? We're going to dig into another one. So this is going to be a birthday card. So from Wheelie Full Wagon, this is our little 4x4 set. I'm grabbing those packages out as if this truck were going to be delivering some packages to someone. So on the back back here, look at this. These are so cute on here. And it's a huge pile of packages, which I think is adorable. Like that truck is really doing its work, right? So there is our gifts that are going to be sent. And now let's color this little truck. So I feel like the background is so soft that color pencils are the way to go. So I'm just pulling out my color pencils here. And I don't really want this truck to be blue. I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, green is already on there. So maybe orange. We did an orange truck one time before and it was pretty. So let's look orange. Or it could be a yellow truck. Let's do yellow. That'll be cute. Let's do yellow. So I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just going to color this truck with color pencils. Now I'm going to take my little white pen and in the gift packages, I'm going to add some polka dots. That's why I did that dark, um, the black um, color pencil, because I wanted to be able to add these little polka dots. Because you know, a lot of gift wrap has polka dots on it, right? Too cute. Okay, let me color the hubs of those wheels. I'm going to do my little gray color here. And now I'm going to cut this little guy out. So there's our little card front and here's our little truck. Oh my goodness. He is so cute on there. <laughs> I knew I didn't want anything real heavy, like heavy colors when I was coloring him. I wanted him to be kind of bright and cheery. So there is our little truck. I may even move him forward a little bit, a little like that. I think that is so cute. Now let's decide what wording we're going to use. So I have this little strip of white card stock and I've dug into another stamp set. <laughs> this is gonna be a just how many stamp sets can she use video. So this one is my North Pole shipping label set, okay? And I'm gonna use special delivery for right there on this one, because this truck feels like it's delivering something to me. So I'm going to ink this little guy up and I'm gonna stamp it onto this little strip of paper. We'll move in a little bit from the edge because I wanna cut a little um, ribbon edge on the end of it there, or a fishtail end. So I've slid in a little bit there, and let's come right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice into the middle, and I'm going to slice from one corner to the middle, and from one corner to the middle. And then I'm going to use another set of stamps. Wow, of the stamps I'm using today. So I'm going to use my clickable letters from Brutus Monroe, and I'm going to do the word dad because it's a masculine card. I don't know. Think of whoever you might have. And another thing, you can always handwrite who it's to. You don't have to stamp here. So I'm going to type, I'm going to type, I'm going to stamp dad right here. So a special delivery for dad. Perfect. How cute is that? I love it. Okay. And then I think this little guy 
is either going to live here. Oh, it's a little heavy on that side, isn't it? I should have made it for this side. But I could always... Okay, do you see my mistake? Let's fix it. Watch this. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to trim this edge here and get rid of that ribbon tail because I should have had this on the other side. You'll see why. It makes more sense for it to come out of here like so. So I'm going to ribbon tail this end. So just what I did a while ago, but just on this end instead of that one. I got lucky on that one. I didn't have to redo all that. Okay, so that'll go here. Specially, special delivery for dad. And I may call the front of this one done. I don't know. I may add something else once I get it onto the card. But let's build the card base because it's a little different too. Okay, so for the card itself, you're going to need two pieces. One that is four and one eighth by five and a half. And one that is five and a half by nine. Okay, and we're going to score this guy. So here's where we're going to do our scores. Just put this into your score um, tool. I'm going to flip this over because this is the front of my card and this is the back. I want to score on the back. So I need to score it at four and one quarter and I need to score it at eight and a half. Easy peasy. Those two score marks. That is it. And then we will fold and crease this guy. So I'm going to fold this down. Line it up nice and neat. Just like so. And then I'm going to fold this little flap in. Now, let me tell you, I did a half an inch flap here. You probably could get away with a smaller one, but I find in these kind of cards, if I use a smaller flap, sometimes it can catch because this is a slider card and I'd rather not have it in my way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this little flap down. Super easy, just like so. And let that just adhere for a second. And while I've got it, I'm going to go back to my punches. You remember we had these punches out earlier. And I'm going to down here on one end of my card, on the, I'm going to do it on the right-hand side. I'm going to punch just halfway in, not even halfway. Let's go a little less than that, about that much, just to give myself a little finger pull, okay? I might need to go a little further than that. Let me see. Because I want to stamp the word pull in there, so I need to give myself some room. Yeah, something like that. Okay. I might end up having to trim this down just a tiny bit. I'm going to have to trim it a little bit to make this fit so it clears my little um, finger pull. So I'm glad I hadn't put any of this together yet. Let's trim that. I'm going to start by trimming it about a sixteenth. A little more than a sixteenth. That's almost an eighth. Let's see how that looks. Much better. It just clears it. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. And then we'll put this guy together in a second. Then you need your slider piece. Now look, I'm making this one so easy. I know you guys love these slider pieces, but I didn't want to give you something as hard as I did last time with the little mini explosion cubes. So this piece is going to live inside here. We're going to stamp the word pull here, but we're going to make this a gift card holder so easy. Okay, here's how I'm doing it. I'm taking a, um, my circle punch, just like I've been using, and some scrap paper. And I'm going to punch three circles. So one two, three. Now, you're going to want to have your gift card handy for this because you're going to size it up. So this is a gift card I borrowed from Josh in his wallet. I was like, does anybody have a gift card? Josh had one. So what I'm going to do is on my slider piece, I'm going to lay this down inside of here just like this, and I'm eyeball centering it. It will not matter, okay? And I'm going to take a pencil, and on this, on two corners on this end, on the right-hand side, I'm going to barely trace that edge. I'm going to do the same on the bottom, just barely trace it. We're going to cover this pencil mark up, and then down here, I'm going to just give myself a little bit of a line to know where all of my little circles need to go. These little circles are going to hold everything on. So now that I've traced those, my little circles are going to hold my gift card in. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this little guy, and I'm going to put glue around the edge, around the side edge of it, like so. I do not want to glue, let me bring it up so you can see it. I'm not trying to glue the whole thing, just this corner, okay? And I'm going to let that corner live just outside of my little pencil mark, okay? You can do these in a different color if you want to, but I thought doing them the same color would make them kind of disappear, and that's why I'm doing them in the white. So just putting glue on the outer edge, all right? And then I'm going to line this one up right to the outside and even with that one. doesn't have to be perfect. 
You're just creating like little holders for the card. That's it. Then on this one, I'm just going to put glue on one end, just like that, a little stripe of glue. And then I'm going to place it about halfway of where my pencil mark is. So believe it or not, this is going to hold your gift card in. And that's how easy it is. We don't have to do any fancy cutting or folding or anything. You do have to let this dry. Okay, don't try to do it while it's wet. Two things can happen. One, you can glue your gift card in. And two, it can tear. So let's let that dry for a second. While that's dry, and let's assemble this guy. Okay, so for my sentiment, I want to glue it straight down. I'm going to pop the truck up, but I want the sentiment glued down. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to place this where I want it. So I can see where to put this little guy. And I'm thinking somewhere about here. So special delivery for dad. And let's pop the truck up on some foam. So I got my foam placed there. I'm using a little more foam than usual. And one reason is because this card is going to get pulled open. Like you're going to pull the little thing out of the inside. I don't think it'll get too much wear and tear. But rather than just have this guy stuck with one piece of foam, I thought I'd add extra. So when you're pulling it, it won't go anywhere. I'm even going to add a little glue, just some dots, just for extra precaution there. All right. And then bring this over and we're going to place our truck. Just like so. I think that's so cute. It looks like such a sunny, cheery day, doesn't it? All right, this guy then is going to get mounted to this one, and I'm just going to do it straight down. Look at my practice side. Not funny. <laughs> I had to practice to make sure we could get it right, so I just flipped it over to practice. All right, and then I'm going to glue this guy right down, just like that. Super cute. And now let's make our pullout part. So the card, what you do is you're going to lift up the edge of these little guys, okay? And you're going to lift this one up as well and stick it under. That's all you got to do. The, the greeting card itself will help hold it in place, but that is going to hold your gift card. And then this will slide right in here like so. And we're going to stamp the word pull right here on this edge. So let me get my stamp. So I'm going to use the word pull from my set called action. This is one of those sets you'll keep on your desktop and use it all the time for all different things. And so I'm going to ink up pull. By the way, just how many stamp sets have I used on this card? <laughs> and just while it's sitting there, I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. So now dad knows to pull from right there. Isn't that cute? I think it needs one more thing, which I should have done. So I'm going to do it after the fact, which is probably going to mess me up. You watch. This is where I get. I get to these points and I decide I want to do something and I mess myself up. But let's just see what happens. So I think it needs a little distress inking, which I should have done before I put it onto this. But fortunately, this color behind is brown, so it really won't hurt anything. So I'm going to pull this guy out for now. And I'm going to use my vintage photo. And this is the new my new little Nuvo tools that we have in stock we just got in and I'm just going to ink the edges because I just think it needs a little something just to kind of tie it in with that brown uh, the brown card that I decided to use the card base I really should have done this before now when you do this do it before this point so it doesn't get so messy mine's getting a little messy I do think it needs this though. It needs the distress ink because it's just something to knock down some of the brightness against the little, um, the color I chose. It was a little too bright. And it doesn't hurt to distress that road a little bit. Okay, so for dad or for any guy in your life and you decorate this any way you want, this is a great way to give a gift card without any bulk even. Look, there's no bulk. You could totally mail this in the mail. When they get it, it says pull. Now, the way I would put my sentiment on is on the back, I would cut myself another piece of cardstock and use this for my, um, my sentiment, also for signing it and leaving anything that I wanted for the recipient. But isn't that cute and an easy way to do a quick little gift card pull tab. Love it. Lots of fun in this card today. A couple things I would change. One, I wouldn't use this dark brown on this one. I should have used like maybe a navy would have been pretty because I don't really love this brown on here. And I would have distressed beforehand because I got a little sloppy with my distressing. But other than that, I think the card is cute. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching today. If nothing else, you learned how to make a quick, easy slider card, right? Um, have a good one. And don't forget, I will be taking... Thursday, Saturday, and Tuesday off. 
Um, again, just a reminder, I'm doing that because we're in preparation for Made at Con, and it's also the 4th of July, and I haven't really taken any kind of time away from YouTube in a long time, so I'm just going to take a few days off. I won't be gone. You'll still see me. We'll come in here and there. We have a 4th of July sale planned and stuff like that, so you'll still see me, but I'm not going to be filming any craft videos for this channel until uh, next week. So I appreciate you giving me a little bit of time off, and um, until then, have a great one. Bye-bye.